November 13, 2015, Paris, France. <coughs> 130 people are killed and hundreds more are injured by ISIS members who made it into France under the cover of Syrian refugees. Now, as Syrians attempt to take shelter in America, we have to ask ourselves, do we want that here? We have already lost James Foley, a freelance reporter, Stephen Sala, a journalist for the Times Magazine, Peter Kassin, a humanitarian worker, and too many more. Are we really going to risk losing more American people? Obviously, that is a risk that we do not want to take, so we should just deny refuge to the innocent Syrian civilians fleeing their war-torn home. But, if we use that reasoning, does it pass the four-way test? Well, let's see. Our claim is that we should not allow Syrian refugees into the country, because if we do, then they will give cover to terrorists who will come in and hurt American citizens. Is it the truth? Well, maybe. It is possible, but it is highly unlikely because our vetting system is one of the most powerful in the world. Is it fair to all concerned? Certainly not. We are denying a safe haven to innocent people because we are acting under the premise that they might accidentally give cover to someone who could possibly hurt us. Believe it or not, Muslim people hate ISIS just as much as we do, if not more so. In fact, the Security General for the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and the Muslim Council of Great Britain have condemned the actions of ISIS and fought to separate themselves from the organization. The third question, will it build goodwill and better friendships? No, clearly it will not. If we deny refuge to these innocent people, they may never forgive us, and who could blame them? According to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, 137,450 Jewish refugees were admitted into America during World War II, while only 2,174 Syrian refugees have been allowed into America in the past four years. How is that fair? Lastly, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Our lives will continue on unaltered. But the same cannot be said of the Syrian refugees. They will either remain in their grim country, or they will go to Europe, which has already taken over one million Syrian refugees just in this past year. Overall, this claim sounds like a false dilemma. To assume that a terrorist can make it into our country past our intense vetting system is irrational and borderline paranoid. Now, let us address the other side of the argument. Our first claim did not pass the four-way test. But our second claim is, we should allow Syrian refugees into the country because it is the right thing to do and they need our help. Is this claim the truth? Yes, it is morally right to give shelter to innocent people and they do need our help. Is it fair to all concerned? Not necessarily. As we saw in the first claim, there is a chance, however unlikely, that a terrorist could sneak in under their cover. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? <coughs> yes. If we allow the Syrian refugees into our country, they will be grateful for it, and they will be inclined to treat us as friends. And the final part of the four-way test, will it be beneficial to all concerned? It will definitely benefit the Syrian refugees because they will have a safe place to live. And once they get jobs, most likely doing the work that we do not want to do, they will stimulate the American economy. So therefore, it is beneficial to all concerned. Our first claim did not pass any part of the four-way test, but our second claim passed three out of four parts. Not every situation will pass or fail the four-way test completely, but by putting the situation to the test, you can see which option is better for everyone involved. If our government would use the four-way test when deciding uh, things about the betterment of people, America would possibly have more allies and would definitely be morally sound. Thank you.